I'm here with Dr. Eleni Linos, who is an Associate Professor of Dermatology at the University of California, San Francisco. Thank you very much for joining us. Really enjoyed your lecture. Thank you for having uh, no, me. No, it's, it's terrific. And it's highlighting a very important mm -hmm. problem that we're finding in dermatology, which mm -hmm. is increasing incidence of particularly superficial BCCs and other non-melanomatous skin cancers in, in the elder population. And we've not really thought much up until now about the burden of treatment in these patients. Mm -hmm. and. And, and tell me a little bit about your experience of the problems that are happening for patients in this group as a result of treatment. Yeah, well, you highlight two very important points. One is that the incidence is going up, mm. and we know that the incidence of skin cancer and basal cells specifically is rising, but also our population is aging. So th the burden or the number of these cancers is growing. Mm. And so I think um, thinking carefully about optimizing treatment for older adults is going to become a very important thing for us to consider because yes. this is a rapidly growing population that we need to care for. Mm. And it's been a little bit neglected in some ways in terms of research and evidence base for uh, therapeutic outcomes and things in, in, with people with a limited or more reduced life expectancy, hasn't it? And yes, you... I think that we definitely know uh, about the effectiveness of treatments in the population overall, but mm. we need to know more about uh, older adults in particular. So the geriatric population is very unique mm. and I think really deserves its own uh, fully comprehensive research to better understand how to optimize care for Absolutely. this population. And, and as you said in your lecture, sometimes less is more and that actually, mm -hmm. as you highlighted, that in many cases, lesions followed up for five years still remain static in size. And patients who have had treatment for these have often had quite a high amount of morbidity from their conditions, up to sort of 30% of side effects from treatment. And it does make us wonder whether, in fact, a sort of watchful waiting might be an appropriate treatment and management plan for a large number of these patients. Well, it does make you wonder if active surveillance, active monitoring, mm. um, which is different from not doing anything. It's different Absolutely. from not following. Um, may be a choice that some patients want to make. And so we are very interested in exploring that with patients. We're doing focus groups and interviews to better understand patients' perspectives mm. as well as our own perspectives as physicians. Yes, absolutely. And, and you also very elegantly highlighted the need to in, include patients in our shared decision-making pathways, particularly at these times at this sort of extreme end of life. Absolutely. Patients should be at the center of these decisions, but of course, caregivers, family members, physicians, surgeons, there are many stakeholders that mm. I think need to join this, this discussion because ultimately we have the same goal. We want to improve quality of life for our patients. Um, and I think we need to keep discussing this issue and keep um, having conversations to move the field forward. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for thank highlighting for it so, so beautifully today. Thank you. Thank you.